adventure you're about to see is based on a true portrayal of outer space. Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage, where we watch every single theatrically released animated film in order. I'm Tennille. And I'm Sean. And uh, we just watched Pinocchio in Outer Space. Space, 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 space. Where do you even begin with this one? I don't know. <laughs> okay. We're in 1965 still. Yeah. Uh, we only have one more 1965 movie to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, okay, Pinocchio in Outer Space. I think we should start with a plot summary. Okay. I'm, I'm going to try and tackle this one. It's basically the story of Pinocchio, but the story of Pinocchio has also already happened. Yup. The movie starts with the Blue Fairy recapping Pinocchio's story to her grandma in outer space? Yeah. And it's essentially, yeah, everything that happened in the Disney's Pinocchio story happened here as well. Well, in the Pinocchio story in general. Mm hmm And then, uh, he was a bad kid, so he got turned into a puppet again. Yeah, so, like... He, Everything Blueberry's happened, like, but nothing oh, matters. Yeah, oh, he was so good for a little while, and then he started being bad again, so I turned him back into a puppet. I'm like, oh, I see you work on the takes backsies rule. <laughs> <laughs> That's cold. All right. So, um, we're also set in roughly the 60s because it's the space race time and everyone's excited about that. Okay. And Geppetto is poor as balls because he sells clocks. Because he's Geppetto. Yeah. And so there's a new menace to the space race. There is Astro, Astro the Whale. Astro the Whale, the space whale. Who has a jet engine spout. Uh-huh. Okay. And he wrecks any spaceship that tries to take off. Or satellite. Or anything, really. Yeah. And so anyway, Pinocchio's going to school. And he wants to take it down because there's a reward, like a large lucrative money reward for whoever takes down Astro. And Geppetto's like, how are you going to do that? Just go to school, kid. Mm-hmm. But lo and behold, wouldn't you know, on his way to school, he runs into Honest John mm -hmm. and Groovy. G -g Groovy. Yeah. All right, because he's a hippie, I guess. Uh-huh. Because it's the 60s and hippies are a thing, so they're going to make the joke character a hippie. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> so, and Honest John sells him, like, I mean, this is very, you know, 60s. Instead of, like, tricking Pinocchio into child slavery, like mm -hmm. the original story, he just tricks Pinocchio into some, like, fad mm -hmm. commercialism thing. Buy this book on hypnosis. Yeah. It's my last copy. Opens briefcase full of, like, 20,000 copies. Yeah. And so, yeah, Pinocchio's duped. He buys this book, and he thinks he learns how to Use hypnotize. Hypnosis. Yeah. And then a spaceship comes down. You're a penguin. You're a penguin. Look into my eyes. You're a penguin. You're a penguin. A penguin. Hmm. I must have done something wrong. Oh, man. Well, I guess I'm a penguin now. Because that's how hypnosis works. You just scream at someone and they become a penguin, I guess. Yep. All right. But yeah. So a spaceship comes down. And out steps Nurtle the Twirtle. Because he's not a turtle. Uh-huh. He takes great offense to that. Yeah, and he's from some planet, and he's like a secret agent. He's a from... special government agent. He's either from Tweedledee or Tweedledum. Something like that. No, no, seriously, it's... 
I'll it's, take your word for it's it. It's quite literally Tweedledee or Tweedledum 9000 or something. Yeah. And, and he's a secret spy agent, so he immediately tells this random kid that he's a secret spy agent. And exactly what his mission is, which is to go to Mars. And he see. accidentally stopped on Earth. Yeah. Miscalculated and stopped on Earth. He needs to go to Mars and see what's been going on there with the Martians. See if there actually are Martians. Right. And so Pinocchio convinces Nerdle to bring him along because he knows how to take down Astro if he should run into him. Mm Mm-hmm. Because he's going to hypnotize Astro to stop him or whatever. I guess. Okay. So they go to Mars and they find all the Martians are dead. Yeah, their the, their city is ruined. There's no one around. It's they, like a red desert wasteland, which you know is Mars. Mm-hmm. They go into this underground lab and they find all these giant animals. Mm-hmm. And then technically, when they first land on the planet, there's these giant space crabs that are trying to attack them and stuff well, too. Well, there's like giant space scorpions too, which are kind of freaky. Uh huh. The space crabs, space scorpions, space lizards that mm-hmm. are look more like old-fashioned dinosaurs. And wouldn't you know it, they also find whales, because apparently the Martians or someone. Was Plot twist: the Martians are the ones who created Astro. And through then, nuclear science. Yeah, it's specifically nuclear science, and that's why all the Martians are dead. And so because this is all Astro very... went crazy because they experimented on whales to make them huge and destructive or something. So yet again, this is all <laughs> a very thinly veiled parallel towards the commentary on the space race and animal testing and nuclear testing and all that. What has science done? Yeah. So, yet again, I think we can say, the real villain was man! (laughs) Or in this case, Martians? Question mark? Yeah, but the Martians represent man. Humanity. Yeah. Intelligent life forms using science. (laughs) It was man! I love it. But either way, there's a sandstorm that gets into the nuclear reactor, and it's going to explode, so they have to get out of there immediately. And they do. And it, the whole town explodes. Yeah, so... Presumably killing all of those giant animals. As well. Except for Astro, who, who is... still flying around in space. Well, he he's on their trail now. Yeah. And they get swallowed. Mm-hmm. Get swallowed by the whale. And then the blue then fairy the shows up. like, oh, man, too bad we don't... We can't do the same thing we did last time I was in this predicament. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Okay. And the blue fairy shows up and is like, why didn't you just go to school? You're a bad kid. And Pinocchio's like, help me anyways. And she's like, fine. Go through the blowhole. Go through the blowhole, you idiot. (laughs) So they do so. And then they get chased by Astro for a while. But one of their wings on the ship is bent so they're flying in a circular pattern in front of Astro which Pinocchio tries to hypnotize Astro but it doesn't work but you know what does work the the brightly brightly colored object spinning in a circle in front of him hypnotizes Astro Uh (laughs) uh-huh and so they tie themselves to the back of Astro and they're just going to fly him into Earth. But then they're like, oh, no, on re-entry, we're going to, like, explode or whatever. Well, yeah, because we Pinocchio's made of down. wood. And they and they actually do set it up earlier in the film where it's like if they're traveling too fast, the ship gets too hot and Pinocchio starts, like, burning up. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So they had to <laughs> circle the planet to slow down. Even though that okay. would speed them up. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Because I may be wrong here, but I'm fairly certain that slingshotting around planetoids speeds up a spaceship or a space traveling object. So wouldn't that just make their entry even hotter? Unless, of course, they're coming in, like, slowly descending while they're circling. I don't know. That seems to be what they're trying to To imply. imply. I don't know. This movie had a lot more... What's the term? Uh... Science magic? 
well, not science magic, but uh, 60, 60 science. <laughs> okay, yeah. Where they, they're they trying to get the information across, but they're probably not totally correct. But it's cool because it's new, mm -hmm. and everyone loves science right now. Yeah. So they're trying to, like, oh, while you're on this planet, you can jump really high and stuff. And, like, okay. <laughs> I mean, you're technically right, but I don't think you can jump that high. But also, like, I don't think the, the gravity on Mars is that different. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's not the same as the gravity on the moon. But who knows what 60s science knew about Mars gravity, so... It is difficult to say. Yeah. Uh, but either way, they slow down uh, Astro, but Pinocchio burns up in the atmosphere or something and dies? Question mark? He's fine. The blue fairy turns him back into a boy for being so brave and for... Whatever. Yeah, for stopping Astro. Either way. And it's all a happy end and Nerdle goes home and... Nerdle goes home to report his report. To report uh, his report and... Yep. Just... Geppetto is now rich as balls and they can live happily ever after. Because money buys you happiness. Honest John and Groovy are never seen again. Nah. The end. Until the next time they try and sell Pinocchio into slavery. Yeah, until we see, like, a third Pinocchio movie. Pinocchio in the Wild West. Don't say that. It might turn out to be real. <laughs> He's got to fight the giant western whale. It's a catfish this time. The giant catfish. <laughs> this isn't real. We're making things up. So, okay, so this was an American and Belgium, like, crossover, working together project. Okay. I said that poorly. But from what I could tell in it's my little bit It's mostly an American-made film outsourced to Belgium? No, I think it's mostly in a Belgium film that was... It's funded by America? Funded by America oh, okay. and distributed by America. And that's probably why everything's in English. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how to feel about this movie. Like, it's fine, but in a bizarre, nonsensical... Like, there's nothing, like, offensive about this. Oh, yeah, no. There's, like, or... it doesn't make me angry in any way. The only thing that... There's, like, I am honestly fine with all of these character designs, except for Geppetto. Geppetto looks awful. Yeah. I hate his design. Yeah, it's real bad. But everything else is like, I'm pretty okay with this. Honest John is like the next weakest character design. Um, I just kind of like sit there and go like, huh. All right. I All guess right. this movie exists. I mean, it's Pinocchio in outer space. So like. My bar wasn't super high to begin with. I think, I think if you can you know, get behind that title. Like, this is one of those you can totally judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. And if you like the cover, you'll probably have a good time. Yeah, it's like, However, it's Pinocchio luck, in outer space, and that's about it. Good luck finding this one. The only copy of this we could find was divided into parts on YouTube. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that was interesting. It felt very, like... <laughs> Seven minute episodes. Yeah. It's like every scene it chopped into like a new mm -hmm. part. Yeah, I, I would say for most people this is probably going to be a pretty hard pass because like there's just not much here. There's a few uh -huh. songs and they're all like ones right at the beginning and then there's two right back away. Back to back in the first ten minutes and, and then, then it's nothing. done. No more songs. Also, we don't get to space until like go to outer space until like... I don't know, 30 to 45 minutes into this movie? Uh-huh. Which is a, a crazy amount of time to get into this film before we start getting to the half part of the title. Mm-hmm. And, like, the backgrounds were nice. The mm -hmm. animation was fine. Mm -hmm. Like, nothing to write home about. But, but it wasn't, terrible. like, you know, it's not going to make your eyes bleed or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Uh... Overall, I just say that this is kind of like a really non-offensive, simple f 
film that's just a, an odd retelling of Pinocchio. Yeah, it's like a, it's a retelling, but also a this, sequel. A sequel at the same time, and it's very clearly that they were basing it off of the American or the the Disney version. Well, yeah, that's, that's the version the most, most people, people know. would know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just really weird. It's it's almost too bad it wasn't more zany. Because with a title like Pinocchio in Outer Space, you'd be hoping for something just like completely insane. Yeah. But no, it's just Pinocchio again in space. It, if I'm being perfectly honest, it felt very much so like it should have been a TV special. Oh yeah. But it somehow got a theatrical release. Yeah. I don't know, man. I think that's really all I have to say about this one. This one will be a pretty short one this week. I just... I don't know what else to talk about. Yeah, like, if bizarre concepts like this pique your interest, go check it out. I mean, but it's a very it's similar... It's really not that special or crazy. I guess something we can, like, correlate it to is, like, uh -huh. we also just watched Gulliver's Travels Beyond the Moon. Yeah. And that is a very similar concept of taking this beloved story but throwing it into space. But I feel like that one worked a lot better. Yeah, they also had a higher animation budget mm -hmm. and better animation overall in well, storytelling. Well, story, yeah. Yeah. Just more memorable characters. This one just had a wisecracking not turtle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, comedic sidekick who's also kind of like the actual hero of the story mm -hmm. because without him nothing would get accomplished otherwise we just have a kid screaming at a whale that he's a penguin <laughs> you're a penguin you're, you're a, a penguin, penguin! <laughs> so join us back here next week as we, we watch the last 1965 film western soda an italian film literally a spaghetti western <laughs> yeah see you then Late. Uh, remember, no side trips on the way. I'll go straight to school, Father. I promise. What a morning. It's a goody good morning. And a goody good day. It's a happy dappy dippy daffy lullaby dappa doozy all the way. And a goody good morning. Do to you all. Gonna have a happy dippy dappy lullaby dappy doozy of a ball.